I worked between rain showers yesterday and got the mill all back together. Got the casters back on it and working and then put the cam followers on underneath it and then hooked the chain up, the drive chain up and uh, made a try, made a pass on that log, cleaned up that one face of it and then I turned it 90 degrees and made another face on that side and then I got a slab off of it of course and I got a good one inch flitch off of it. Then the today between rain showers it rained pretty heavy all morning and I didn't really get anything done but I just come out and started it up and I finished facing off this log. I turned it 90 degrees here and took the slab off of the top of it and then I got another one inch flitch on there. I said this end was kind of, kind of got a wow in it here and it's got a lot of taper on it but that cleans that log up into a nice camp. So anyway there's a nice one inch board, one inch flitch. It'll have to be cut to size. And then I got a two inch. And this is got a one good edge on it mostly. It's got a lot of wane on this upper end but it's mostly got it, uh, a good cut on it and then this side will have to be trimmed off. But this is a 14 foot log and I need 10 foot 2 by 6s for the decking on the house on the porch. So if I cut this off 4 feet there won't be a whole lot of weight on that and I can make, well let's see what can I make. That's 6, that's 12 inches I can't quite make two, almost make two two by sixes out of that. Each one is going to have one good edge and one edge with a little bit of wane on it. But And then this uh, four feet off of the end of it here. Forty-eight inches right to here will be waste to be used for something else. So, anyway, the mill is running pretty good now. Like I said, I took that, I don't want to drop that down on that one inch flitch. I'll take it off and stick it up in the wood, in the lumber rack, in the lumber shed. Anyway, the two sides of that I faced off to 16 inches, so the total log was 16 inches from one flat face to the round face. And now I've got a 12 inch uh, cant there now. By this end is, well, by the time I get down past the wane, it'll be uh, 12 by 12. So I can get four 6 by 6s out of that. So anyway, what I'll do now is I'll move this stuff off of, the, off of the mill, and then I'll run that mill and cut this cant in half into two 6-inch cants, and then roll those up and whittle them down into 6 by 6s or whatever I can get.
that log is no more. I got four nice six by sixes out of it and two two by sixes. One's got quite a bit of wane on it, but it'll still be a good enough board for what I need it for. Uh, it's got one good face on it. Only need 30 more of them. I think I need a couple more. Let's see, I've got three six by sixes that I got out of there before the mill, uh, well, before I quit operating the mill. And uh, so that gives me seven. And I think I need, what do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I got, maybe I got enough. Maybe I got enough. Thought I needed a couple more. Of course, it doesn't hurt to have a couple more. I always use a six by six someplace. So I need some four by four, uh, four by sixes, and of course, a whole bunch more two by sixes. Well, I just took those uh, four six by sixes off the mill. I've got them sitting on the forks on the skid steer on the bobcat. Just going through in my head what I needed here for that uh, porch framework and I'm going to have four upright posts on the outer side and four against the wall. The four on the outer side are going to be six by sixes. The four against the wall will be four by sixes. Then I need one 16 foot six by six to go uh, as a header uh, along the outside wall on top of the post, the uprights, and I've got three 16 foot 6 by 6s so that'll work. And then I need two 12 foot 6 by 6s to go for a framework between the wall and uh, the outside. So anyway, I've got enough 6 by 6s but I need some 4 by 6s so that's what I was going to start cu cutting now. And I've got these yellow cedar logs that I dug out of my wood pile here earlier this winter, this spring, that I'm going to dig out and cut 4x6s out of. So anyway, I'm going to cut, start cutting 4x6s. And this one here has got a lot of taper to it. It's a top. It's, got a lot, it's pretty knotty and got a lot of taper to it. And I just measured it. It's 19 feet long, almost 20 feet long. If I cut that into two eight footers then I can get a couple of four by sixes out of the top and a couple of four by sixes out of the bottom or some more out of the bottom but anyway that'd be the most efficient way to cut that log would be to go ahead and cut it in half and mill it up that way that way I can compensate for the taper and I don't lose as much wood on the butt end of that log as I would if I cut it as a full 20 foot log but I'm thinking right now that I may Go ahead and cut that off to 16 foot and make my 16 foot 4 by 6 out of that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, okay. That way I can get my one 16 foot 4 by 6 out of that. Because I know the other ones I've got aren't quite 16 feet long, the other two that I've got. And they're pretty scabby. One of them's got a big cat face in it. And the other one's broken off on the end and stuff. And I couldn't get a 16 footer out of that. So, All right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, cut that one into a 16 footer. And then... Uh, and then mill it up into four by sixes. I trimmed off a little bit off of the butt end of that log to get the checks and dirt and stuff off of it and I measured off 16 feet and trimmed off the top end of it here so we got a well it's actually closer to 17 feet I always like to leave extra on there and I can trim it down with a skill saw or the saw when I'm finishing up in case anything is wrong with one end or the other or it's not square or something like that. But anyway, I got it cut off here. Got two nice clean ends on it. Now almost any log is going to have some taper in it between the butt, usually between the butt end and the, and the top end of the cut. And some logs you can't hardly tell it. Some of these big cedar butt logs you can't hardly tell there's any taper in it. Some of the big dug fir redwoods and things like that that grow in a heavy forest where they have a lot of competition and they're fairly tight-knit or where they grow great big you can't hardly tell any difference from one end to the other. Some trees that grow out in the open like a big pine tree that might grow out in the middle of a field or pasture along the edge of the road or something like that where it doesn't have any competition for light or soil they'll have a lot of taper in them between the butt and as it goes up it just looks like a plug. So this is the top of a yellow cedar log and it starts tapering out pretty good. So the butt end of this one I measured it is 15 and a half inches and the top up here is just about 10 inches. Well if I leave that sitting on the log deck like that and cut it, the grain is going to run out. Meaning the grain runs parallel with the heart of the wood and if the heart of the wood is not parallel with the cut then the grain is going to run out of the 
board or the finished wood when it's done and it's liable to split out. So we want to try to keep the cut parallel to the grain of the wood or grain of the heart or the heart of the log. So since this is 15 and a half inches on the butt end and 10 inches on this end, there's a five inch, a little over five inch difference between one end and the other. So if I raise this end here, the small end up five inches, I would have this, the top of it would be parallel, but it'd have the same problem. It would run out on the, the grain would run out. The heart is not parallel to the bed, the deck of the mill. So what I'll need to do is split the difference, which is approximately two and a half inches, a little over two and a half inches uh, between one end to the other. So I'll jack this end up, uh, lever this end up here and stick a shim underneath it here to, to uh, lift it up. What I want it is to be a little over two and a half inches above the deck of the mill. Now right now because of the way the log is, because of knots and, and uh, things on the log, it's already sticking up on this end a little bit. It's probably not quite enough, but I'll, I'll go measure it and check and then I'll pull that up a little bit, block that up a little bit and uh, get it stabilized to make a cut. Now if I had one of those nice new all hydraulic mills with the tow boards on it, I could do it with the tow boards and just use one tow board to raise one end up or the other end up. That would be pretty nice, but I don't have that luxury, so we'll do it by hand. Now I could actually do this two ways. I can measure the diameter of the log and divide it in half, or I can measure the heart of the log and just raise one end up so that it's uh, the same height as the heart of the log on the other end. Either way works. Well, I've got that raised up on a 2x4 and measuring it out that uh, gets me pretty close to the heart being parallel with the track. So I'll clamp that log down. There's going to be a pretty good chunk of waste on that, on that other end, but that's the way it goes. I'll have to do that with this face cut, and then I'll turn it 90 degrees and do the same thing with the second face cut. And then once those two cuts are made, I can just lay it flat on the deck. And
And of course they run out of gas. So we'll let it all cool off, put some more gas in there and So that's an 8 inch, uh, I'll make my next cut at 6 inch and then the next one at 4 inch and I'll get two 2 by 6s off of that since it's a 16 foot long and what I need is 10s I'll get, uh, yeah I'll get two good 2 by 6s out of that. So I'll let that engine cool off a little bit, put some gas in there and then finish that one up. I gotta put the camera away because it's starting to rain out here the mill gassed up and going again and finish that uh, cut, finish that cant. I changed my mind on it. Instead of uh, cutting two 2x6s two out of that, uh, top of that, and one 4x6, I already got an 8x6 there, a nice one. 